Hey, this is Kenneth at Eddie the Head Fan Club, and we welcome Derek Riggs, the original artist and creator of Eddie. We are here in Colorado Springs, Colorado at the 2021 Comic-Con. Derek, welcome and thank you for agreeing to a short interview with us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It's, um, this is the first interview I've done for ages. There have been some written interviews which were made up by the writers and I had nothing to do with. So I'm doing this one, which is, you can see it's me. See? <laughs> Okay, so great. Um, most of our fans already know the history of Eddie and they know your name very well. So we're not gonna revisit old news and we're gonna move into just what's happening today with you and with Eddie. So first off, we're gonna kick off real quick with the first question. Uh, COVID, the debacle that's happened with all around surrounding COVID has truly changed the way we do things in our everyday life. How has this impacted you personally and also as an artist? Um, we thought it would be very damaging for the business and it turned out not to be. It was... Um, the fans have decided to... The fans have decided to go online and um, buy stuff from the website and the Facebook page awesome. which was uh, really cool we didn't expect that. We thought we're going to end up with a dead zone now. <laughs> um, personally, it hasn't really affected us much. We don't go out much. You know, I spend a lot of time just sitting at home working or drawing or just being lazy because I'm good at being lazy. <laughs> Was there anything specific that uh, you can share that helped you pass the time during the lockdowns? More um, work, less work? Um, well, we didn't do the, um, uh, what do you call them, Comic-Cons. Right. We, we didn't do the, the conventions. We didn't go out on the road, because that takes up about, oh, to do one weekend convention, you lose about two weeks getting ready, going out, all that stuff, because America's quite big. <laughs> um, so with that time, my time wasn't broken up in the way that it is if I do um, Comic Cons regularly. And so I could sit down and, and you know, think about what I was doing. And I've been, I've started um, a bigger picture. Somebody wanted me to do a version of Killers. So I'm doing a background for it. It's not just a figure like most of the other ones. And it's coming out quite well. So that's gonna be fun to see if the fans like it. Okay. I think they will. Yeah, I um, think so too. Um, and I've, I've been messing about trying to get some electronic music made. And every time I come to a halt because I find something else I don't know and I have to go and learn it. <laughs> like, how do I make production work? You know, how do you get... And, and so I did a lot of reading and research. And, ended up listening to Quincy Jones a lot because mm. <laughs> you know rock production won't work for weird electronic music I had to do something else and a lot of the stuff that has been done uh, it wasn't what I wanted to do so I needed a different attitude some people that did it a different way so I went back to jazz and to classical music producers to see what they did so that's what I've been busy with. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm nearly, I've nearly finished the song. <laughs> so getting back out on the road, how does that feel and how does it compare to before COVID? Oh, I don't shake hands and cuddle people as much, which is a good thing, I think. <laughs> that was getting a bit intense. Um, but apart from that, it's not been a lot different. Okay. Um, you know, we still pack up, we still go on the road. We still do a lot of driving. We still arrive and we're zombies. And then we kind of perk up for a couple of days. And then we're zombies. And then we drive home. And then we're zombies. <laughs> zombies get around. <laughs> okay, today it's uh, becoming more and more difficult to find an artist who draws using the old school techniques. Do you think that the digital drawing will completely eliminate freestyle? Or do you think No, I don't. Um, people like drawing with their hands, with pencils, 
And when people want to buy a picture, an original, well, you can't with digital. You know, there, there's a finished file, but there's no original. When people want to buy something, they want to buy something unique, something somebody's physically worked on. I don't think that will ever go away. Digital, I find, I enjoy working with digital. It's great fun. I, I've come out with a few new techniques that might produce something interesting, but it will never look the same as painting. It really won't. And um, as, as far as purchasing stuff, like I said, it's 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 nice, but it's always a print. There's there's never an original with digital. And somebody says, oh, I can I can do one print of this and then uh, destroy the file and it will be unique. But you know, no. He wants proof of his work, so he's going to keep at least one copy of the file. <laughs> if he says he's destroyed the file, I don't believe him. It's like burning the original. <laughs> Okay, you, t you attend uh, quite a lot of these Comic-Con events. Um, this is my first Comic-Con event, and I've been at your booth for most of the afternoon, and I see that you're constantly busy, very yeah. busy. Is this normal at all of the Comic-Con events? Mostly. What tends to happen is, you know, these guys are rock fans. They, they get up at midday, right? <laughs> so we're, we're, we're not that busy around 10 or 11. We get a rush in the morning, and then it goes quiet. And then there's a rush in kind of 12, 1 o'clock kind of time. Uh, and, and then it goes quiet again, and then it, it's, there's a bit of a rush at the end. And, and in between, it dribbles along. You know, people come in one or two at a time. But, I mean, sometimes we did do a gig in Santa Fe, and they couldn't have advertised anything because it was obvious nobody knew I was there. You know, it was like tumbleweeds and crickets. Mm. There were actually more vendors than there were punters. <laughs> People walk in, walk round once and leave. You know, <laughs> it was dreadful. And we, we, on the other side of that, we did, um, um, oh, a gig at Phoenix, a couple of gigs at Phoenix. Well, I just didn't move from my seat. Mm. The fans just stormed in and I was sitting there 24 hours a day signing things for about three days. <laughs> this uh, is where we go back to being a zombie. <laughs> well, those are good things then for you. Um, the good side of zombieism. <laughs> okay, I know we're getting kind of short and tight on time and you have to get back to your booth, but uh, just a couple of, couple of easy questions here, more personal in nature. Uh, what is your favorite movie? I think still Blade Runner, Blade Runner. on average. Okay. I love the Star Wars things, and quite like the new um, um, Star Trek, although they don't really match up with my vision of Star Trek. <laughs> you know, they're not, what's the word, consecutive. I'm really not in favour of that, let's go back and reinvent everything stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got a framework, are you good enough to work within it, or are you not? <laughs> and for these things I think they're not. They look great, they're well acted, they're well written, but they're missing the Star Trek thing, or the Star Wars thing. Mm. They've lost a step, you know. So, yeah. How about yeah. your favourite actor? I don't have a favourite actor. Awesome, okay. I kind of really don't care about actors and actresses, to be honest. <laughs> I'm into the story and the movie. What else they do, couldn't care less. Not interested, you know. Okay. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, William Shatner, Captain Kirk, you know. Mm. TJ Hooker couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about your favourite book? Um, favourite book, that's a good one. Um, probably Doom, I think. The whole series, that the ones that right. Frank Herbert wrote. I've not actually read the others, so I can't speak about those. Um, um, I've read a, a fair number of books over the years, but that's the one that kind of stayed with me um, longest. Uh, there was another one, uh, but I've forgotten who wrote the thing. It was about vampires and werewolves and uh, coming in from other worlds and stuff like that. And so, uh, and I can't remember his name, Frank something. Long, Frank Long, I don't know. No, can't remember, it's gone. Ne uh, uh, necroscope, that was the name of the book, and I've forgotten who wrote it. 
Sorry, author. Forgot your name, mate. <laughs> Still got your plug in, though. <laughs> and this one's more personal to me because uh, when you and Kim come to visit, I got to know what kind of, what's your favorite food so maybe my wife can cook it for you. Oh, I don't know. Um, I've got this crazy restricted diet that I ignore continually so that I can eat like a person right. and not like a small hamster. No, right. right. So, I, I, did, oh, I don't know. I make vegetable chilies a lot. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, if Eddie could talk, what would he say today? He'd go, ah, ah, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Like that. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Is there anything you'd like to say personally before we uh, move on? Um, I don't know. Uh, buy lots of prints. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on behalf of Eddie the Head Fan Club uh, and all its fans, Christian, Robert, and myself, we thank you very much for taking your time out of your busy day to interview with us. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for interviewing me. I'd better go back and sign some stuff. <laughs> all right. Appreciate it.